In other words, the ancient Egyptians were true Negroes of the same type as all native-born Africans. That being so, we can see how their blood mixed for several centuries with that of the Greeks and Roman must have lost all the intensity of its original color while retaining nonetheless the imprint of its original mold. Just think that this race of black men, today our slave and the object of our scorn, is the very race to which we owe our arts, sciences, and even the use of speech. Just imagine, finally, that is, it is in the midst of people who call themselves the greatest friends of liberty and humanity that one has approved the most barbarous slavery and questioned whether black men have the same kind of intelligence as whites. Meister Mosey here, I'd like to welcome you all to Transcending Media and um, started today's quote off with a uh, quote from uh, this gentleman known as Constantine de Volney, a Frenchman from the 18th century, uh, somewhat describing what he'd seen in ancient Egypt, or rather when he saw the Sphinx, among other things. And the reason I start this show with that quote, a uh, show titled uh, Black versus White, the truth about racism is because that's what I want to discuss a little bit about today is the truth about racism and what racism really is and its foundations and its ramifications. Now, as you can see, um, this dude, uh, Devani, you know, from like 1700s or 1800s thereabouts, you know, this was before the Industrial Revolution had taken off but it was around the same time that a lot of these European empires were you know going around uh, continuing to conquer and you know impose their ways of life on other peoples and recently you know with especially this comedian uh, Donald Trump being uh, put on the stage you know, the world stage for people to observe or continue to be tricked in order to play along with this uh, phony system of slavery that we have set up for us. People still are trapped in this black versus white type of thing or mentality, you know, and it's actually beyond that. I have recently been beginning to see and notice and understand how this is a human problem. It's not a black problem or a white problem or a yellow or brown or whatever you what have you. It's it's a human problem, and the problem is right now people you know making the problem or ex exasperating the problem happen to be Europeans which is quite unfortunate seeing that I, you know, have a lot of European friends and listen to a lot of European uh, philosophers, you know, I, I like Aristotle, Plato, all these people that, you know, that kind of show what humans are capable of when they think, you know, so... Um, in that quote uh, that I was uh, reading of Devani, there was a little, uh, there was a, a sub quote of him quoting Herodotus, mentioning how Herodotus from yeah around I don't know 300 BC or so, quoting or pretty much saying the same thing that ancient Egypt uh, was a population of Africans or blacks, in quotations. So you'll notice when I say blacks. I, I, no such thing as black exists, no such thing as white exists. And for the simple fact that I would be considered black, but I am not black. I'm actually kind of right now, because the sun is getting a little more intense, I'm becoming a little more like reddish maroon. And probably at the middle of summer, it'll be pretty much 
getting close to, to brown, you know, so, and that's the case all across Africa. There is no such thing as a black person. It's just different shades of brown, just like in Europe, it's different shades of beige or pink, you know, so in in kind of touching on those elements a little bit i'll go as far as to expand on the idea of of what being black and what being white means today today being black like i was mentioning is someone of pretty much african descent and someone who is white is pretty much someone of West Eurasian descent and notice that I say West Eurasia because Europe is still part of Asia it's all one landmass they just quartered themselves off you know from where it becomes more Asian looking people and then they say oh no Asian and you know brown so to speak because Syria and Russia are part of Asia as is India and China <laughs> so right there you see like Russia is Europeans, India is Africans and Semites and Persians and China is, you know, Asians, Asiatic people, Mongols, you know. Um, I'm gonna have to look into how those people describe themselves in their own cultures as I see that as a way of actually respecting the people because these titles that we use in English are based off the caste system of white being at the top and black being at the bottom and then everyone else is in the middle you see so and at the end of the day really what i'm trying to to, to get at is is this idea of superiority that has emerged among uh, mostly pretty much Europeans and now it seems like Asians are kind of taking that syndrome of you know race supremacy on because they have apparently been able to adopt their neighbors ways of living you know much quicker than everybody else so especially with the like the quote that I brought up in the beginning, which was pointing out how ancient Egypt or ancient Kemet was was an African was an African country or an African nation or a region populated by African peoples until Greeks and Romans came in there and mixed in with them, is to show how history has been distorted and suppressed and and just fucked with so that one group of people can feel better about themselves at the expense of another and it's it's a game that has been going on for a very long time it's just this time it's with the uh, Europeans at the helm of it and one thing people don't seem to understand is before Europeans went around conquering the world they conquered themselves first they conquered each other first Europeans were in a state of feudalism well into the 1300s, you know, they were starting to get their act together once their Arab cousins, you know, decided to come and help them out a little bit, and then from there onwards is when we start seeing, you know, some resemblance or semblance of a civilization that is, you know, getting poised to expand. So like I said, up to, well into the 1300s, because that's when, you know, they were getting out of the Dark Ages, and it's when you had people like, um, what's that dude, uh, Martin Luther, you know, when the Protestantism, you know, uh, among other people, and then followed by people like uh, Da Vinci and Michelangelo, people who were <laughs> painting things that were Christian, but with underlying messages showing that yes yes yeah i'm showing you jesus but there's something more than jesus here you see like that sistine chapel um 
Michelangelo painting where you know it's, you can clearly see it's it's the brain of it's a, it's a human brain you know God is located in the in the human mind one way or another <laughs> like these dudes figured that out in the in the 16th and the what, 14th century 15th century and then you start beginning to see them now starting to go around and conquer the world after they realize oh shit God is actually in the mind holy smokes oh, what can we do with this now we can go around and conquer people by convincing them to believe in an external God and convince them to you know to pay homage to our image or our interpretation of what God is and make them see their interpretation as primitive or evil or satanic which is what they did in Africa, Asia, South America and what they did in Europe the witch, the witch hunts, the inquisition all of these things began in Europe you understand? so that's why for me racism is a, is, is a, is a problem not for black people or minorities it's a human problem every it's a problem that all of us have to undertake because at the end of the day we are all slaves you're just a white slave as you want to call and i'm just a black slave and of course in a world where the supervisors on the plantation are white, i.e., you know, the, the political leaders, the the banksters, the the religious leaders, the majority of them in these positions of power, they're white. So of course you on the plantation being white, you're gonna have a better position. Just like in a plantation, a house nigger would be accommodated, you know, comfort, specific comforts that the field nigger would not have. You see what I'm saying? So in that aspect, you could just simply see the white person or the white European commoner as the, the house nigger and the black or minority populations as field niggers. You see, and, and once you begin to see how we're all in the same fucking boat, at the end of the day, just different cabins of the boat, you know, that's being steered by someone we don't even fucking know. Like we don't know who these people are. We can we can have an idea based on their, you know, on the on the types of people that end up in power, but nobody knows who these people are. You know, and anyone who tells you is lying. Because if people knew who these people were, like come on, it's like there's at least a billion of us ready to do something about it. You know what I'm saying? So no one knows. What we do know is that they use tools like religion, government, and economics, which results in racism. Because that's what the racism is all about. It's all about economics. It's all about saying, oh, this person is not worthy of this or that, so they're not able to pursue this or that. And if you're not able to pursue what you feel would, you know, add value to your life, then come on. Yeah, you're a fucking slave. <laughs> so, with that said, um, there is another quote that I would like to share with you. It's from another, another Frenchman from the late 1700s, early 1800s. And he says, uh, though its proportions are colossal, the outline is pure and graceful. The expression of the head is mild, gracious, and tranquil. The character is African, but the mouth and lips of which are thick has a softness and delicacy of execution truly admirable. It seems real life and flesh. Art must have been at a high pitch when this monument was executed. For if the head wants what is called style, that is the say the straight and bold lines which give expression to the figures under which the Greeks have designated their deities, yet sufficient justice has been rendered to the fine simplicity and character of nature which is displayed in this figure. 
the character being African. And the Greeks, you know, emulated what they had seen the Africans do while they were, you know, creating their monuments. Those monuments that you see all across Greek and these Roman empires were inspired by going and viewing and seeing how Africans did their own thing. So I am not very sure what happened along the lines, but somewhere down the line, someone did something that fucked over the other person or someone out of spite or just out of ego and a desire to just control everything or something went wrong somewhere and you know it went from a give and take relationship to a take 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 relationship where uh, now we had uh, Europeans going from people who came to receive certain information and knowledge turned around and you know oppress the people who provided them with that knowledge and made sure that they either destroyed suppressed and you know twisted that knowledge to come off as their own and now you see conquering the world or ruling the world or creating a global civilization does not does not require slaves it only requires slaves if you're doing that in a way that people would not approve of you see what I'm saying so if you come to me or you go to some people or if I come to you and say hey guys let's go conquer blah 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 da 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 you know what I'm saying people be might be like nah man we good over here there's some people living over there we don't want to have to you know have to go into conflict with them you know for no reason but you know but then you have these narratives of oh no but they're savages they're primitive savages you know they do this they do all these things that are that are not human blah 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 so we must go and help them become civilized like us you know and and then you have what we see in the 21st century you have a hypocritical system or civilization where it's all about freedom but at the expense of someone else's freedom and that is truly not freedom freedom does not come at the expense of someone else's freedom because then there's nothing free that's not free if it comes at the expense of someone else it's not free you see what I'm saying so um, I just wanted to get you know the discussion started a little bit um, I will f follow up I feel like I should actually get all the quotes I want to use in order so that I can be able to share them with a lot more ease so um, I guess this is part one of many so I'll probably see you guys in not too long. Alrighty.